يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما يا معشر المسلمين أو قد ورد في الحبر أن سيد البشر وشفي أمتي في يوم المخشر سيد الأشراف ومتمم مكارم الأحلاك والأوصاف سيد العرب والعجم سيدنا محمد ابن عبد الله ابن عبد المطلب ابن هاشم ابن عبد مناف أنه كان صعيد الخطيب على المنبر ثم خطب فلا يتكلم نهدكم ومن تكلم فقد لغى ومن لغى فلا سواب جمعة له أن ستوا رهكم الله فاستمعوا غفر الله لنا ولكم ولوالدينا ولوالديكم ولأستاذينا ولأستاذيكم ولجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Before we proceed, just a friendly reminder to donate generously to the house of Allah. Shukran. <coughs> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Was salatu was salamu ala ashrafil mursaleen. Sayyidina wa maulana Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن تبع طريقهم إلى يوم الدين اللهم زدنا علما فهما وحكمة يا رب العالمين All praise be to Allah سبحانه وتعالى who has gathered us on this auspicious day of يوم الجمعة Praise be to Almighty Allah and salutations be upon his beloved Prophet Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all his companions. Today, inshallah, we look at an important form of worship, namely, ibadatun kalbiya, the worship of the heart. And that is through having a good opinion of Almighty Allah, having the right thoughts about Almighty Allah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in a beautiful hadith, Ana in the dhanna abdi, in dhanna bi khayran falahu khayr, wa in dhanna bi sharran falahu thalik that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to us in a beautiful hadith, I am as my servant assumes of me. If the, if the assumption is good, he gets good. And if he assumes evil, he gets evil. We are living in very, very challenging times. We live in a time where there's a lot of unhappiness, a lot of people do not find fulfillment 
in their lives, a lot of people don't have motivation for life. A lot of people want to earn money, but very quickly. They don't have the patience to work diligently. A lot of people are struggling to make ends meet because the cost of living is so high. And so today, I need to focus, I wish to focus on this particular aspect of Almighty Allah where he reminds us that it is important to have good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if we have positive thoughts, good thoughts about Allah, then goodness will come to us. If we have bad thoughts about Allah, then bad things will come to us. And that is not easy when human beings go through difficulties, when they go through challenges. Why is this happening to me? Why is this? Why is it that I have to go through this? Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in another hadith how beautiful, how marvelous, ajaban li amril mu'min. How marvelous is the affair of the believer. Wondrous is the affair of the believer for there is good for him in every matter. And this is not the case except with the believer. Now if you look carefully at this hadith, the first part, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us that every affair of the mu'min is there is good for him in everything, no matter what you go through in life. People go through a spectrum of things through their lives. Sometimes things go so well for us. Sometimes things go bad for us. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to us in the hadith, if he is happy, then he thanks Allah and thus there is good for him. And if he is harmed, then he shows sabr, patience, and thus there is good for him. And sabr is a virtue that is not easily exercised, especially when the calamity hits us, when we go through difficult times, it is not easy. And so it is important to have in our mind and more importantly in our heart, the firm belief, no matter what I go through in life, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends good for me. As a believer, we need to establish that first principle. And so today I'm going to share with you a narration from the life and times of a great tabi'in. And you all know a tabi'in is a person who has not met the Prophet but he has met the companions who met the Prophet And this is from the life of Malik ibn Dinar, who narrates to us the following narration. Malik ibn Dinar, rahimahullahu ta'ala, he says that there in his time, there was a severe drought in the region of Iraq. And all the people came out the drought was very severe. All the people came out to pray for rain, Salatul Istisqa they offered. And they prayed over and over again the whole day, but not a single drop of rain fell. Evening came and everybody went home. Malik ibn Dinar and one or two of his pious companions they remained in the masjid, sitting on the side. And as darkness fell, a young man walks in. He walks in, he takes wudu, and he performs two rakats. And when he finishes performing the two rakats, he raises his eyes to the heavens, and he says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Kam taruddu ibadak ya maulaya. How long are you going to re reject answering the call 
of my slaves, of your slaves. He says further in the narration that your treasures, have they gone empty? Or will they decrease if you give anything of your treasures, O oh Allah? He says, أَقْسَمْتُ عَلَيْكَ بِحُبِّكْ لِي إِلَّا مَا أَسْقَيْتَنَا غَيْثَكَ أَسْسَعَةَ أَسْسَعَةَ He says, I swear upon you, O oh Allah, by your love for me, bring down the rain upon us now in this moment. That was his dua. Malik ibn Adina, rahimahullah, is amazed that how can a human being make a dua with such confidence and ask Almighty Allah in the manner that he is doing. And he says, his dua is hardly finished. The rain clouds gather and immediately it starts to rain. Malik ibn Dinar gets up and runs to the man and says to him, he says, tell me, how is it that you can make such a claim? that Allah loves you and therefore he must send down the rain. How is it possible? The man says to him, he says to him that بدأني بذلك إلا لمحبته إياه He says, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his creation of all his creations he manifested his irada, his will. And I am a creation of Allah. Like yourself, each one of us, like each one of us as we are sitting here, we are a creation from, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah's will has been manifested. Kun fayakun, and it became. It's an expression of Allah's love for each one of us. Think about it, brothers and sisters in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in manifesting his will in our creation, he is expressing his mahabba, his love for each one of us. And this person, whose name was Maymun, he understood that Allah loves him dearly. And therefore, he could say to Allah, by your love, I beseech you, O Allah, to send down this rain upon us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send down this rain. And Malik ibn Dinar tried to look at this man's face. He was a slave. And the person, he says, he wanted to speak to him more. And he says to him, I cannot speak to you because I need to go back to my small master. The small master being his owner. And he says, I need to get back. So he hurries back in the rain. And Malik ibn Dinar follows him. And he sees that this man enters a, trader's, a slave trader's home. And the next day he goes and he says, I want to purchase a slave from you. And the slave trader shows him all the slaves. And he refuses everyone. And he's about to leave, and he sees in the distance, there is the person that I'm looking for. He says, I want to buy that particular slave. He says, that one, he's got so many shortcomings, uyubs. It's not worthwhile buying him. He spends the night crying, and the day he's just by himself. You want to spend money on him, you're wasting your time. Malik ibn Dinar says to him, I want him. And he purchases him. And as they leave the house, the slave Maymun says to Malik ibn Dinar, why did you purchase me? Lima ishtaraytani. Why did you purchase me? Malik ibn Dinar hears these words from the slave. Why did you purchase me, O master? The slave Maymun, repli uh, the, the, uh, Malik ibn Dina replies to the slave. He says, Ishtaraituka hatta 
purchased you, O oh my master, so that I can serve you. Malik ibn Dinar was one of the greatest tabi'ins that lived. But what he saw in this lowly, poor, thin, poor-looking, tattered clothes on him, slave, was the greatness of Allah manifested in this being for his love for Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never judge a person by the color of his skin or by the poverty that he or she may have. Each one of us, as we are sitting here today, each one of us, we are an expression of Allah's love for us. And therefore, we need to play our part well. And so, as they carry on, he, they, he listens to this man. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has expressed his love to us. And so we need to value that and appreciate that. And so they come to a masjid and Maimun the slave says to him, can I offer two rakahs in the house of Allah? He says, you may do so. And as he prays two rakats, Malik ibn Dinar watches him. The man goes into sujood. And when he is in sujood, he waits for him. The man doesn't come up. But another person enters by the masjid door. And the man says to him, this, These two shrouds are for my master, Maimun. Malik ibn Dinar gets the shock. He has never seen this man before. And he never saw this man afterwards. And he goes to Maimun, who's on the ground, and he shakes him, moves his legs and hands, and realizes that that he has gone to the realms to, of Almighty Allah. He has died. And this man brings in a coffin from nowhere, and he says, give it to my master, Maimun. And so, Malik ibn Dinar, he buries this person, this wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He realizes that when this person had a husnul dhan about Allah, he had a good thought about Almighty Allah, Allah raised him to another level and status. Each one of us, it is important, as we go through life, through difficulties, you could be struggling financially to settle your debts, to make your payments. Ask Allah to help you. Speak to Allah. Allah is Al-Ghani, the self-sufficient one. When he gives, he's been giving each one of us from the time that we were born to this day. And so if we lost a job, if we lost a business, turn to him, beseech him. But when you make the dua, make it with such conviction that your aunt, your call will be answered. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to us, Udullaha wa antum muqinuna bil ijaba. Call upon Allah with the conviction that your dua will be answered that your dua will be answered. So sometimes you find that you try doing something else and you fail. You try something else, that also failed. You go into partnership with someone who takes you for a ride and you feel very, very despondent. Never despair from the mercy of Allah. Everything happens for a reason, but be positive always that Allah will find a way out for you. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا The one who is mindful of Allah, Allah will find a way out for him. وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ And Allah will provide rizq from a direction which you know not. And so, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that fulfills the needs of everyone with the passage of time. Sometimes you could be a child that has been abused in the past and the thoughts of the past could be haunting you. Turn to Allah to help you to overcome your difficulties and challenges. You could be a child that has been bullied in school or in any situation. Ask Allah to give you the strength not to break your spirit, but to be strong under all circumstances. You could be a person that is going through so much of difficulties. You could have lost your a beloved one. Turn to Allah with sincerity and ask him to strengthen you in these times of difficulties. Remember always, we make the beautiful dhikr so often and regularly. Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. What are we saying to Allah? You are the one that suffices. And you are the one on whom we put all our reliance upon. You put your trust and absolute reliance on Allah that he is sufficient for you. When you have that kind of yaqeen, conviction, then you will not fear. Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, Husnu dhanni billah huwa miftahul khair wa sirrul ataya. He says, having a good opinion of Allah is the key to access to all goodness and the secret of being given. What you are lacking, Allah will provide for you. What you are lacking, Allah will provide for you. But you must have the conviction that Allah is all-knowing. He is all-seeing. He knows what your needs are. Ask him. And when you make that dua, know that Allah is the one that will answer your call. And so you find yourself in a situation that remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that says to you in the Quran, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ When my servant asks about me, say, I am near. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعْ I answer the one who calls. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاءِ إِذَا دَعَانِي When he calls me, says Allah, فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي Then you answer my call. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ And so, brothers and sisters in Islam, times are not easy. Yes, people feel despaired sometimes. They sometimes think, how am I going to overcome my problems? But you need to be anchored in the divine remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah speaks to us so generously in the Quran and in the ahadith. Nabi ibadi anni al ghafurur rahim. Inform my servants that I am all forgiving. Sometimes you, you think I have committed so many sins. Allah will never forgive me. Nonsense. Allah is very forgiving. He is so forgiving that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us that you know when a camel owner lost his camel and in his happiness and excitement when he found his camel, he didn't think clearly. He says, Allah, you are my Rabb. Now I am your Rabb and you are my slave. In his happiness, he used the wrong words. Allah is more grateful than that servant. And so, brothers and sisters in Islam, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in a hadith, Inna rahmati sabakad ghadabi. The mercy of Allah precedes his anger. In another beautiful lengthy hadith, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, Inni harramtu al-dhulma ala nafsi. O oh, my servants, I have forbidden zulm for myself, oppression, and I have made it haram amongst you, so do not oppress one another. The hadith is quite long, I won't complete all of that now, but it is important to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
allows things to happen in our lives. You go through difficulties and challenges, but there is a reason for it. Sometimes it is the cause that we turn more to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so we draw closer to Allah. Malik ibn Dinar saw in this person that his love for Allah was so profound and deep, and it he influences entire thinking by the love that Allah expressed for him. And so go through life remembering that Almighty Allah loves each and every one of us. And turn to Him from the depth of your heart. Ask Him to help you to overcome whatever challenges, difficulties you are facing as an individual, as a family, as a nation. Pray to Almighty Allah from the depth of your heart. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all the tawfiq wa akhiru da'wahum an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Here's a few announcements. Dua of Shifa for Halima Abdullah and also for Yasmin Ali of Joburg. May the Almighty Allah grant Shifa to each and every one who's not well. And then secondly, Qurbani, Imam, kindly contact Imam Ghulam if you have any Qurbani to offer, he says. And thirdly, there's an apology from the Habibia Masjid for the trestles here that are in front, of, in front of me, for the scaffolding rather, that are in front of me. There's a leakage and it's causing quite a bit of inconvenience, so kindly bear with us. And shukran wa sorry, there's one more. And also... A reminder that every Wednesday after Isha'i, the Khatma Khwajagan takes place, and also the Dhikr and Qasa'id, that is Thursday after Isha'i by the Aswatul Habibia. And then lastly, a pre Hajj program every Tuesday after Isha'i, questions and answers, all are welcomed by Sheikh Luqman. And then I see another one here. It says here, Pharaohs and Husna Banu Sunday, they wish to bid us farewell on their Hajj journey which will take place on the 7th of June, 2023. Uh, the flight is at a leave 18 hours, leaving the residence at 14.30. We pray to Almighty Allah to grant all the hujjaj a safe journey to take them through the Holy Lands with good health and well-being to bring them back with safety and salama. Shukran wa akhiru da'wahum anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allahumma izzal Islam wal Muslimin wa adhin la shirk wa mushrikin Rabbi khfil lana bil khayr bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Allah Akbar
حيا للصلاة حيا للفلا قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعمل وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين الحج أشهر معلومات فمن فرض فينا الحج فلا رفس ولا فسوق ولا ددان في الحج وما وما تفعلوا من خير يعلم الله وتزودوا فإن خير الزات التقوى واتقوني يا أولي الألباب الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله الله أكبر الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله 
الله أكبر الله الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله ما أنت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك ربنا وتعليت يا ذو الجلال والكرام سمعنا وأطعنا وفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد 